Do you wanna use Innate In for free without paying for a subscription? I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step to make sure by the end of this video, you have a fully running local setup for Innate In and a cloud hosted server if you'd like to do that as well. Now, there are a few prerequisites to start before we get into this tutorial. Uh, number one is gonna be an up-to-date Mac or PC. I'm gonna show this on the Mac. However, you can follow these same steps on the PC. The next thing we'll need is the Docker desktop application. Uh, don't worry if you don't have it downloaded. In the next step, I'm gonna show you exactly where. The last thing we'll need is a GitHub account. If you've never created one before, I'll show you where you can sign up. All right, now that we've gone over all the prerequisites, let's go ahead and get into this init in self-hosting tutorial. Method one, self-hosting locally. The first thing we need to do is install Docker. Docker is a game changer for software. It lets you package your apps and everything they need to run in a standardized, portable container. Major companies like Netflix, Spotify, and Uber are all using Docker to deploy their applications quickly, reliably, and at scale. So go ahead and download the Docker desktop application for whatever operating system you're using. It's gonna prompt you step-by-step -step on how to install it. Go ahead and drag it over to the applications folder. Agree to the Docker subscription terms. Again, it's not gonna cost any money. It'll be completely free for us. And once we have that sorted, we're ready to proceed with the next step. Let's make a new folder in our local storage and call it n8n slash data. That way, if your computer accidentally gets shut off or your terminal closes, you'll still have access to all of your workflows in that folder. Just make sure to save it to a location that is local on your computer. Now, open up your command prompt or terminal. We're gonna use this command if you're on Windows and then this command if you're on Mac. So you can see here on my terminal, I've already set this up one time before. If you see that after you've already run it, go ahead and put in the same command one more time and that's gonna get you up and running. This is what it will look like the first time. So just give it a few seconds to run and get set up on your terminal. Once we've input those commands into the terminal, we're gonna head over to this link here. I posted it in the chat description as well. And this is gonna be how we access N8N when we're self-hosting directly on our own computer. It's gonna prompt you to set up an admin account. And once you do that, you're all done. You now have an open sandbox where you can refine and optimize your automations before you actually deploy them all by just hosting locally. Now remember, when you actually exit out of the terminal, you're gonna to need to reload the terminal and use that same command with your specific path to actually reinitiate N8N locally on your device. And this brings us to method two, self-hosting N8N through the cloud. First, you'll need a free GitHub account if you don't already have one. Go to github.com and create an account. Once logged in, navigate to the official N8N GitHub repository. Click the fork button in the top right corner. This creates a personal copy of the N8N code and your own GitHub account. Then we're gonna deploy this copy. So we've successfully forked the repository. There's just one more crucial step that we need to take that helps us avoid many common deployment headaches down the road. We're gonna add a Docker file to the root of our forked N8N repository on GitHub. In your forked repository on GitHub, click add file and then name the file, quote, Docker file with a capital D and no file extension. Then copy this code exactly how it is. I'll have it for you in the description. This simple Docker file tells Render to use the official pre-configured N8N Docker image as its base. Next, go to render.com, click get started in the top right hand corner and choose continue with GitHub. Then authorize Render to access your GitHub repositories. And we're gonna be creating a new web service. For the source code, we're just gonna be linking our GitHub, which has our forked N8N repository, which you can see there. Click on that and that's what we'll be using for our source code. You can keep the branch as master and then for the region, pick somewhere close to you. So if you go with the free option, it's still gonna work perfectly fine. However, it will spin down after 15 minutes of inactivity. So if you're really trying to have uh, zero downtime and run your automations 24 seven, then I recommend going with the paid plan. So once you pick a plan, scroll down a little bit and we're gonna add an environment variable. Call this init in encryption key. We're gonna generate a long random and strong string here. This key encrypts your sensitive credentials in init in. Make sure not to lose this key. In the Docker command section, type n8n start. This explicitly tells render to run n8n start when it launches our Docker container, making sure that it actually launches correctly. Now, just click deploy web service. Render will now start building and deploying your n8n instance from the Docker file. This process can take several minutes as it pulls the n8n Docker image and sets up the server. So be patient, it might take a little bit. You'll see the build log scrolling in the background. Once that's complete, you'll see your service is live and then you're all set. Click on that URL and you'll be prompted to set up your new owner account. And if you are going with the cloud solution on render, I would highly recommend the paid plan as then you can set up a persistent data directory and have 24 seven runtime. If this guide helped you get your automations up and running, please hit that like button, leave a comment, let me know which method you went with and subscribe for more automation deep dives. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.